Hello and welcome to another episode. This episode will be a tour of my local observatory, the fam- famous Royal Observatory at Greenwich. However, it won't be focusing on anything to do with clocks, navigation, latitude or longitude. While all of these things are related to astronomy, they are not what this channel is about. However, it is not surprising that they are so prevalent in the history of the observatory due to its links with the Royal Navy. Instead, I'll focus on the astronomy aspects of the observatory. Some of the most interesting astronomical objects are actually at the entrance to the observatory. One of the ones I find most fascinating is Flamsteed's Well Telescope. I find the fact that I'm thinking of building telescopes inside wells fascinating, as today we build them on mountains and in space. All that is present now is a round uh, brick circle to indicate the size of the Well Telescope. However, they don't know exactly where the Well Telescope would be, um, because it's seen, been since filled in. Interestingly, this was the first telescope built for the observatory in 1676, and it was the least successful of the Greenwich Zenith telescopes. Um, its purpose was to establish if a star in Draconis had any parallax. The telescope went down approximately 30 metres, but was abandoned shortly thereafter due to the damp. Another fascinating astronomical artefact outside of the observatory entrance is actually Herschel's telescope. This was finished in 1789 and was the largest telescope in the world for 50 years. However, looking at this video, you'll be forgiven for thinking that it's not in fact that big. That's because the original telescope was destroyed by a falling tree. It was in fact originally 40 feet long, being a local tourist attraction where it's based in Slough in Berkshire. Unfortunately, this remaining 10 foot long section is all that remains of the once 40 foot long telescope. The telescope itself was actually a special design, the Herschelian type. This is where the secondary mirror, typically found in a reflecting telescope, is removed, and the primary mirror reflects the light out slightly outside of the tube, where it's then focused. This telescope was credited with giving exceptionally bright images. This telescope may have been involved in discovering the sixth and seventh moons of Saturn, Enceladus and Mimas. Once you pass through the entrance of Greenwich Observatory, you'll first run into Flamsteed House. This was the original part of the observatory, and construction started in 1675. Believe it or not, it was originally chosen because of its uh, clear skies, good views of the horizon, being on a hill, and rural location. In 1676, shortly after the observatory was constructed, observations began in the octagon room. However, when John Flamsteed arrived, there were no telescopes or clocks available, and so he had to provide his own. With the help of his patron, who also provided some highly accurate clocks that only had to be wound once a year, which was unusual in those days and most had to be wound every eight days. The extra long pendulums of the clocks were actually hidden in the wooden panelling of the octagon room. Unfortunately, because the octagon room wasn't aligned with the local meridian, it wasn't used and constructed a new star catalogue to improve navigation. However, he did use it for a specific events such as observing comets and eclipses. The next thing we're going to look at is the Meridian Observatory. This is something quite strange for modern astronomers. It is essentially a telescope to measure the height of a star above the horizon as it passes the north, south or meridian line. This improved the mapping of the stars and over 600,000 observations were made from the Meridian Observatory. These measurements were further improved with the airy transit circle. This is where the astronomer pressed a switch as the star transited the meridian. This would cause a needle to puncture some marks into some paper which rotated on a drum in time of a synchronised clock. The details of the observation would then be read by another astronomer. I think you'll agree though that the most impressive telescope at the Greenwich Observatory is the Great Equatorial Telescope. This is the eighth largest refractor telescope in the world. To get into it you need to climb some stairs and then walk along a narrow path to get into the actual dome. It's called the Great Equatorial Telescope because the metal structure supporting the telescope is an equatorial mount. This telescope was used for observing double stars and spectroscopy from 1893 to 1947 when London smog became too great to actually carry on observing. While the telescope did measure the uh, diameter of Jupiter and comets and many, many binary stars, isn't really famous for any particular discovery. Well, that's the end of the tour. I've covered most things of astronomical interest, except for a few things that are closed due to the COVID outbreak, such as the camera obscura and the planetarium. 
I know this has been a bit different from my usual astronomy episodes, but I hope you found it interesting. If you did, please give it a like. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And if you'd like to see more astronomy videos, then please subscribe. Goodbye and clear skies.